Multilayer ceramic capacitors are a unique class of components. They are optimized for two things, to be small and to make your life miserable with dozens of unexpected effects. Some engineers say that MLCCs are not real capacitors, but just because you're strange, it doesn't mean that you're not one of them. So in this video, let's go over the 8 most important effects so that you can nail your next design, impress your boss and get a promotion. To understand the non-linearities of MLCCs, you have to understand how they are built. These devices are optimized to be small and are structured internally as many capacitors in parallel, increasing the total capacitance. But because they are small, area is not their strength. Instead, most of the capacitance comes from the short distances between plates and the permittivity coefficient of the ceramic materials. But these materials have drawbacks. The permittivity coefficient is usually not constant and varies with temperature and field strength being the reason why MLCCs are split in two classes. Class 1 capacitors use paraelectric ceramics, which have moderate values of permittivity and present a more stable characteristics. Class 2 capacitors use ferroelectric ceramics with a much higher peak permittivity coefficient but larger variations across other variables. And learning these dependencies is what makes you a pro. The most common of them is the capacitance derating with voltage. The nominal capacitance value is only available at low voltages. Because the permittivity value varies non-linearly with the field strength, applying a voltage will reduce the coefficient impacting the available capacitance. This effect is analogous to the saturation of inductors with currents and is more pronounced on class 2 capacitors. Some manufacturers will provide you with proper derating curves so that you can plan and compensate for this effect. A similar effect degrades capacitance as a function of the temperature. All MLCCs receive an alphanumeric code that defines their capacitance behavior under temperature. This allows you to properly choose and compensate for this effect. Class 1 capacitors present a linear behavior with COG type being the most stable. Class 2 capacitors vary in a non-linear way, with their nominal capacitance at room temperature dropping significantly above or below this range. They are used when large capacitances are desired but no precise value is needed. Another curious effect is piezoelectrics. Just like resonating crystals, these ceramic materials change shape, expanding and contracting with an applied electric field. These changes create acoustic waves, which can be heard if the frequency of the oscillation is within the audible range. The opposite effect is also noticeable on low noise circuits, especially amplifiers, where mechanical vibrations are translated into voltage noise. To avoid that, reduce the voltage ripple with other capacitor types or use class 1 capacitors in sensitive circuits. Now, if you chose a capacitor, you probably want a capacitor. But if you go beyond its resonant frequency, you will get an inductor. The geometry of a real capacitor creates a parasitic equivalent series inductor. At low frequencies, the capacitor behavior dominates, but as you increase the frequency, this small inductor may have a big impact. Like an LC filter, MLCCs display a very low impedance at resonant frequency. This may result in oscillations that may not impact your circuit, but can severely degrade its EMI performance. Avoid that by using low ESL versions of capacitors and operating below their resonant frequencies. The other parasitic elements comes from the loss tangent, one way of representing the parasitic resistance value as a function of their capacitance. ESRs will create voltage ripples across the capacitor with AC currents flowing through it, and just like a resistor, it will also generate heat. Ceramic capacitors present a very low loss tangent, which allows for large AC currents with little heat dissipation. Class 1 capacitors have lower limits for their loss tangent, usually an order of magnitude lower than class 2. Dielectric absorption is the effect where capacitors lose their capability of fully discharge. It refers to a memory MLCCs display when kept charged for very long periods of time. This happens because the molecules within the dielectric retain their orientation in the same direction as the field, even if the field is removed. Over time, it may impact precision and accuracy in circuits such as analog to digital converters and in analog integrators. But if you never manufactured a board, Tomstony may be a new term for you. It happens during the reflow stage, whenever the solder paste melts quicker on one side than the other, a surface tension is enough to lift these capacitors up. This effect can happen with most two terminal components, but happens very often with MLCCs due to two factors. The higher height of these components, and the fact that they are often connected on one side to the ground plane, which increases the chance for delayed melting of the solder paste. But the number one issue is cracking. As you probably learned during your childhood, ceramics are not flexible. Microscopic cracks result from mechanical stresses during mounting or with shock and vibration during operation. Cracked MLCCs may go into short circuit but may also silently fail by going into open circuit. The result is all sorts of strange effects that are very hard to diagnose. Avoid using large form factors and prefer MLCCs with flexible terminals whenever possible. In the end, MLCCs are virtually in every design out there. The important thing is knowing what you get when you decide to use them. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel for more short, high-paced breakdowns of electronics. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Microprocessed.